I've got to admit, the public turning on Lizzo wasn't on my bingo sheet last year. Between winning four Grammys and inspiring big girls everywhere, Lizzo seemed unstoppable. The singer's reputation for championing body positivity was sadly called into question when three former backup dancers took out a lawsuit. In addition to weight shaming, Lizzo was accused of discrimination, creating hostile working conditions, and various forms of harassment, most notably one involving bananas. Google it. Several others would speak out against Lizzo with another lawsuit following. Lizzo denied the allegations, calling them sensationalized stories and outrageous, but the impact on her career says otherwise. Charlie Sheen became the highest paid actor on television when he starred in the popular sitcom Two and a Half Men, but his epic 2011 rant on the Alex Jones radio show has become the stuff of Hollywood legend. The actor couldn't stop talking about how much he was winning, and while I think his career might have survived that very odd self-promotion, his remarks marks against his boss, the creator Chuck Lorre, were not about to go unpunished. What did he have to say? He's like, oh, I embarrassed him in front of his children and the world by healing at a pace that this unevolved mind cannot process. I've spent, I think, close to the last decade, I don't know, effortlessly and magically converting your tin cans into pure gold. And the gratitude I get is this charlatan chose not to do his job, which is to write. Well, he was quickly fired from the show, personally by Chuck Lorre, and I haven't heard a positive peep about the man since. It's kind of easy to forget just how on fire Shia LaBeouf's career was in the mid 2000s. Remember Michael Bay's first Transformers movie? I have it on DVD, loved it, went on to be a box office giant, spawned how many sequels? 2008, the actor joined yet another monster franchise when he starred as Indiana Jones' son in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But sadly for him, if you're gonna diss a Hollywood legend like Steven Spielberg, especially when you're boss, it's not going to end well. So he took a giant swing at Spielberg and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull during a 2008 interview with the Los Angeles Times saying, I think the audience is pretty intelligent and I think they know when you've made crap and I think if you don't acknowledge it, then why do they trust you the next time you're promoting a movie? And then he doubled down. There was an interview with Variety in 2016 saying, I don't like the movies that I made with Spielberg. The only movie that I liked that we made together was Transformers 1. So it should come as no surprise to anybody that Mutt Williams was kind of cut out of the next Indiana Jones movie. Wonder why. John Mayer was one of the best selling pop artists at the turn of the 21st century. Then he decided to sit down for an extended interview with Playboy in 2010, and he didn't make just one disastrous comment during the interview. He made several, any of which could have derailed his music career. So he dissed his ex girlfriend, America's sweetheart, Jennifer Aniston, saying that she was hoping it goes back to 1998. He also went in the naughty TMI direction when talking about another one of his ex girlfriends. Jessica Simpson. What did he say about their love life? Well, he's like, oh, it was crazy. It was like things I can't say. Did you ever want to say I want to just quit my life and just um, do things to you? If you charged me $10,000 to do things to you, I would start selling all my stuff just to keep doing things to you. And then there's more. He expressed some very casually racist sentiments by sprinkling some slurs several times throughout the interview and comparing his member to something. He was rightfully bashed for his comments, especially on social media, causing him to like apologize. If I remember correctly, he tweeted an apology regarding his use of certain slurs saying it was arrogant of him to think he could intellectualize using it because he realizes that there's no intellectualizing a word that is so emotionally charged. His music career was never quite the same. I think he's now like a touring guitarist but like, oof. In October of 2004, Ashley Simpson performed her hit single, Pieces of Me, on Saturday Night Live, and it went fine. However, when she returned to the stage to perform her next tune, Autobiography, things went south and fast. The vocals for Pieces of Me began playing while Simpson's mic was still down at her side, and she tried to recover, for some reason, with a spontaneous hoedown before bolting. At the end of the episode, you can see her being like, I feel so bad, my band started playing the wrong song, I didn't know what to do, I thought I'd do a hoedown. Later on, she blamed her acid reflux for her reliance on a backing track, and she attempted comebacks, but the public wasn't having it. She was booed at her Orange Bowl performance, and her record sales have never recovered. Even if you've never watched a Miranda Sings video, you've certainly come across some form of Colleen Ballinger wearing too much red lipstick. Outside of YouTube, she's been on TV, Broadway, animated movies, you name it, and her reputation was mostly unscathed, other than a scandal when YouTuber Adam McIntyre accused her of inappropriate behavior when he was younger. And then that 
fizzled until June of 2023 when another YouTuber, Cody Tyler Dahl, backed up McIntyre's accusations. In addition to grooming, Ballinger has been accused of racial insensitivity and so, so much more that I can't talk about. How did she respond? Oh, wait for this, folks. She apologized while playing a ukulele without actually apologizing. More allegations and criticisms followed, and then she canceled her tour and, like, honestly, I don't know, I think telling haters to back off isn't going to solve this career blow. Gary Busey was an acclaimed actor in the 1970s and 80s, even nabbing a Best Actor Oscar nomination for his titular role in 1978's The Buddy Holly Story. Unfortunately for the star, a stubborn stance and an instant disaster ended his shot at ever returning to that level of success. Magazines report that he was an outspoken advocate against motorcycle helmets for years, despite a lot of data and common sense showing helmets prevent death and serious injury to riders in accidents. Well, well, fast forward December of 1988, he was involved in a motorcycle crash without a helmet and needed hours and hours of neurosurgery to remove clots from the brain. He said it was a critical situation, the right side of the brain, where the damage was, controls verbal and musical skills, emotional expression, and the ability to recognize visual patterns. After the operation, he couldn't talk, walk, swallow, he had temporarily lost his fine motor skills, and he later learned that 50% of patients with head injuries like his die. Thankfully, he survived, but after the accident, he struggled with addiction, and still refused to wear a helmet. His career since the crash has been relegated to cameos and like TV work, and by that I mean like celebrity rehab, just all straight to video stuff. Yeah, you ever seen uh, Ginger Dead Man? I sadly have. It's an hour of my life I'm never getting back. The talented and handsome Alex Pettifer seemed to be on a guaranteed path to Hollywood stardom after starring in I Am Number 4. He then held his own in the hunk department, even among the likes of Channing Tatum, Matthew McConaughey, and more in Magic Mike. However, before the English actor set foot on the path to superstardom, he gained a reputation of being difficult to work with. After just two American films in the can, The Hollywood Reporter described the actor as surly, arrogant, and disrespectful. An unnamed source who worked with him on the set of I Am Number 4 told the news yeah, he was a nightmare and irrational. He had no body of work to remotely justify his behavior. However, it was his interview with a magazine in 2011 that really set back his promising career. He was asked about LA and he's like, oh yeah, it's growing on me a little bit, but it's still a uh, crap hole. I think it's this insidious pool where nearly everyone lives in fear. Geographically, it's fantastic, but socially, it's disgusting. I'd wish they'd run all the C words out. So obviously, he did not come back to the Magic Mike sequel and I think all of his work since has been in really little scene movies, if anything. What could have been? In June of 2001, Beverly Hills 90210 alum Rebecca Gayhart accidentally struck and killed someone who was crossing a Los Angeles street. Magazines report that it was the star's alleged negligence that really led to the tragedy, with police noting that several cars had stopped for the pedestrian when Gayhart pulled into the left lane to pass them and hit him. She settled a wrongful death lawsuit with his family the following year, but the damage to her career was done and like, yeah, you killed someone. Since then, her work has mostly been relegated to TV movies, guest starring roles in TV shows, a couple of single seasons of television projects. And speaking with news outlets, she credited her relationship with her then husband, Eric Dane, as well as getting professional help through therapy for just sort of helping her through what she called a terrible, terrible time. She's mentioned that it's something that's with her every day. It will be for the rest of her life. Like she doesn't think she can get over it. And yeah, I don't blame her. Well, that's all for today, folks. See ya. We'll be right